Well, hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to talk about the batteries that I'm using for my system on these MPP 5048s. Uh, this is only for my system. This is what I designed for my system. This is what I think will work best for my system. However, this video you can still use if you are going to be designing your own system. You just need to work the numbers the way you need them to be for your system. Now, let's start with the cells that I've been using for the last four or five months. Um, I purchased them off of Alibaba.com and they are not really brand new. However, I think these are grade B cells which are meant to be around 150 amp hours as suggested on another YouTube channels and on websites that you read. Some other people are paying about $100 for them shipped and delivered. I paid a whole lot less than even what it's on the screen right now for mine. So this is the starting price on them. You can definitely negotiate on Alibaba.com and try to get best price for yourself. I chose this over anything else because I wanted to experiment, experiment and try, see how I can make them work for my system at a reasonable price. I would assume if we are watching this video one year down the road, this price won't even apply anymore. However, it is what it is at this point. So let's continue with other things. Here are the specifications for this specific cell that I bought. 120 amp hours, nominal voltage of 3.2 volts for a LiPo4 battery, lithium, uh, lithium iron phosphate battery, uh, max charge 3.65, max discharge voltage is 2 volts per cell. Standard charging current is 0.5C. Standard uh, discharge current is 1C and max charge current is 1C. Down below we do see we can charge a battery between 0 and 45 degrees Celsius. We can discharge between minus 20 to uh, plus 60 degrees Celsius. And you have other temperatures below uh, uh, that are specific to this battery. So let's continue. Same as it is on the screen, we see the uh, information about the battery right here on the paper in front of us. I did decided to go with old school style with the paperwork in front of me, um, maybe a little bit something different instead of trying to make animations on the uh, computer screen and then presenting it. This is the information. Uh, the, we will explain everything else in a detail as we go, but let's open up my power wall and let's look at the cell, see how does it look like in real life. As we can see, these are each here individual cells. Okay. Uh, we do see bus bars on the left and right. One is for negative side, one is for the positive side. And then we see interconnecting cables between these cells, between these modules. These are cells and the whole thing is a module. And then there are 16 modules in my power wall. And then three cells per module. Okay, this is the cell itself. Let's continue on paper. Now we can see the same thing on the paper. This is a module, uh, three modules, uh, three cells per module. The positive sides are connected with the bus bar, negative sides are connected with the bus bar, and then there are interconnecting cables between the modules. Here's the actual life size uh, bus bar that goes on the, on the cell terminals. And we do have a interconnecting cables that I built for connection between the modules. 
Uh, you might ask yourself, why am I going to be using three per module? Well, these, this four gauge wire, it's, it's very flexible and it's very easy to work with. So that's why I decided, decided to use on a connection between the modules. Um, if I have I tried experimenting with one art Windy Nation just like this cable, but it is too stiff at that gauge to interconnect between the modules. So now you understand the reasoning behind this. If you have seen the previous videos, you will notice that. Okay, and then we do see the information for information for this uh, for the cell and the module. The cell, each cell is 120 amp hours. And for me, and we will explain in the chart later, uh, chart chemistry chart, chart for the uh, lithium iron phosphate battery uh, seems like the, the best performance is at 0.2 C discharge rate which for my cell would be 24.5 uh, 24 amps per cell most efficient okay now down when we come to the module we have three cells connected into module and since we are connecting them in parallel that means you are adding the amperage of those cells so three cells at 120 amp hour each gives us total of three, 360 amp hours at 3.2 volts at the nominal discharge rate of 0.2 C, that is 72 amps per module. Now we see on a paper representation of my total power pack or power wall or battery pack. Uh, we can see that over here on the bottom left, we have a positive and they inter interconnect with each other. Uh, each of these lines represents that battery cell interconnect cable and each one of these lines indicates a bus bar and it gives you a little bit of a better illustration of what's going on. When you add all of these modules at their nominal voltage of 3.2 volts and there's 16 of these modules, you will get total voltage of 51.2 volts nominal at 360 amp hours. Total energy is 18,432 watt hours or 18.4 kilowatt hours. Now, let's discuss the most important thing here. Here is the real-life representation of how my power wall works or a pack 16 modules three cells per module consists makes my battery pack this is why I think is the most important thing of this whole power wall this one this one chart applies for to the whole pack so you can extrapolate everything from it. This is a discharge profile curve for uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. Okay, this rep discharge represents uh, um, discharge capacity ratio at different discharge rate. The top curve and the most sufficient curve is at 0.2 C. Next one in a, in a line is 0.5C, next one down is 1C, 2C, and so on and so forth, okay? Uh, up in the top left corner, I marked where I charge my cells to, uh, my modules to, or cells. 3.54 is a max charge per module in my power wall, okay? Uh, at that point, I consider it fully charged. I do not go to 3.65. I try to keep it there, thinking that it might prolong the life of these batteries. But we will see. However, my maximum discharge at 0.2C rate is at 2.8 volts. OK. 
okay, at 0.2 C discharge rate. At that point, we are a little bit above 100% usage, meaning you're probably going to get more than 120 amp hour capacity, which I do. So, in this top corner, we do see we do see that the max charge 3.54 volts per module times 16 modules gives me a total battery voltage of 56.64 volts. Now let's illustrate that. So here's the voltage of my power pack at current point 56.6 volts. And now you do see the 390 amp power message there too as the total capacity of my power wall. We'll come to it. So the fully charged power wall is at 56.64 volts. Now minimum is at 2.8 volts per module times 16 module. That brings us to 44.8 volts. So I have went into my MPPs and set back to grid voltage, voltage setting of 45 volts. Let's look at that. Back to grid voltage. So that means as soon as it gets to 45 volts, it will stop charging and go to grid. So now you might have wondered, as to why I have 390 amp power uh, capacity on the battery monitor. That's because at 0.2 C rate discharge, which is 24 amps amp per cell or 72 amps per module, gives me this amount of energy, actually the capacity out of that battery, actually about 128 amp hours. Um, that's what I found out with these with these cells when I purchased them and uh, this is what works for me best and keeping it at this discharge rate I think will extend the life of the battery now let's talk for let's talk about future plans and how I make the how I make all of this work now on this illustration over here we see on top uh, the two LV5048s that I have. Their total output capacity is 10 kilowatt hours. Um, nominal discharge per pack. Well, let me start like this. I'm, I'm planning to have three power walls. Okay. Each power wall will be exactly the same. And each can produce 72 amps nominal discharge per power wall. Uh, if we add those three power walls, meaning three power walls or three packs at 72 amps each, that gives us nominal discharge rate of 216 amps. That is a 0.2 C rate discharge with my batteries. Okay. Down at the illustration where the power walls are, it says that each power wall pack has its own BMS and it will have a balancer too. Each power wall has a nominal voltage of 51.2 volts. And if we take 51.2 volts times that 216 amps, I can deliver 11.06 kilowatts at 0.2 C discharge rate. I think this will work very well for me and my system uh, that will this will provide longevity this will provide uh, minimum heating up uh, during the charging and discharging cycle of the batteries and I will probably never use it at 216 amps at the same time because 11.06 11.06 kilowatt is a whole lot more than 10 kilowatts. Yes, there is uh, some exchange rate there too between the efficiency and the batteries. So yeah, this is about the max that I can use. And still, and that max of two LV5048s, 
I'm still at 0.2 C rate discharge for my battery system or a power wall system. I hope this provides a little better picture of what I'm trying to do. Now, let's discuss one last thing. And that is when my house is running normally and no, my normal is between one and two kilowatts uh, discharge, uh, one, one to two kilowatt, uh, uh, one to two kilowatts load. Let's see what happens at that time and how much are we discharging uh, the battery. What is the total load on this one power wall? So as you can see, this is pretty much where my house sits majority of the time when we are just in it and uh, doing normal day-to-day -day things. If I turn off these lights in the garage, these neon lights, the load will be probably around 1.1 kilowatt. So, and the discharge rate would be around 20, 24 amps. So I'm trying to keep even this one power wall when I do need to use it and when I use it well below 0.2 C discharge rate for my power wall. I know this was one long video, however, I hope it gave you guys some more explanation as to what I'm trying to do and what I'm trying to do with this, uh, the battery, uh, the, the, the battery packs or power walls that I have. This is the way I design it. This is the way that I always want it to work. And uh, we will see how it goes in future. I will keep updating. Talk to you guys soon.